A few months ago I made this simple 18650 battery charger. It works fine, but now I want a better one with voltage monitoring and discharging capabilities. So here it is. The schematic is very simple and most of the components came from banggood.com. I've placed the products links in the video description. For charging the batteries I'll use some TP4056 modules with discharge protection. These are very cheap, especially if you buy a pack of 10 pieces. For more information about the TP4056 module, please watch my first battery charger video. Today I'm going to show you how I've built a different and more complex charger. I'll need a switch with 3 positions and 6 pins to toggle between checking the voltage, charging or discharging the batteries. For monitoring the voltage, I like these mini digital voltmeters. I need to measure the components so I can calculate the enclosure and more importantly the front panel. This will be the front panel. I don't have a 3D printer so I've decided to make it out of plywood because it's cheap, non-conductive and it's very easy to work with. I've bought this simple 4mm plywood sheet from my local hardware store. The big square in the center is for the battery holder. To cut the plywood, first I'll drill some holes, then I'll use an electric jigsaw with the finest blade. The charging module's tiny LEDs will be replaced with bigger ones, so I'll drill some 5mm holes. After cutting and drilling all the holes, I'll use some sandpaper to smooth out the plywood surface and edges. It's time for some color. I think the battery charger looks best in black so I'll spray a few coats of black paint. While waiting for the paint to dry, we need to find a way to fix the battery holder in the right position. The charger will have a thickness of around 3 cm. I need to raise the battery holder a bit to match the front panel level. I'll cut two squares from this leftover chipboard. One square is not enough because it's only 8 mm thick. So I'll use some wood glue to make a 16 mm thick stand. I'll put a weight on it and leave it for a couple of hours. After the glue dries, the edges will also be painted in black. The enclosure components are finished, you can also use a plastic box, but I think the black wooden texture looks better. The battery holder will be fixed in position with super glue gel. And I'll remove the tiny LEDs from the charging modules. I'll stick the charging modules to the plywood with hot glue. The TP4056 IC will get a bit hot while charging with 1 amp, but not hot enough to melt the hot glue. Let's start with the negative battery wires, they are the shortest. The positive battery wires will be replaced with longer ones. The negative supply wire is common to all the charging modules. I'll add some solder to make the joints better. The switch pins need to be bent because there isn't much room under them. The charging module positive supply wire will come through the switch and the circuit will be closed when the switch is pressed in the one position. You need to make some very precise calculations when designing the enclosure to make the switches fit this way. Of course we need a lot of shrinking tubes of different dimensions. All the wires will be cut to different lengths so I can solder them while the enclosure is opened. In the next few minutes you will see a lot of wires, but don't get scared. In fact, it's very simple, just stick to the schematics. The positive 5 volt supply wire is common to all the switches and voltmeters. For the discharge feature, I will use a 10 watts and 10 ohm resistor. According to Ohm's law, the 10 ohm resistor will draw 420 milliamps when the battery is fully charged to 4.2 volts. And at the lowest point, when the battery is almost discharged, the current consumption will be 250 milliamps. Then the discharge protection feature will disconnect the battery from the circuit. I'll solder 4 wires to each resistor. The two extra wires will power a LED when the battery is discharging. The discharge circuit will be closed when the switch is pressed in the forward position. For the USB cable I chose these 1.5mm wires because they need to deliver up to 4 amps. This pink wire will be the positive supply wire for the voltmeters. The LEDs will be fixed in position with hot glue. For the LEDs we need some thin flexible wires, so I will use these breadboard jumper wires. 
every charging module has two LEDs connected with a common anode. And of course we need to insulate all the wires. The LED pins will also be bent, there is very little space for all the wires. I'll put hot glue on the soldering joints, they are very fragile and may break until I finish the wiring. I'll make the voltmeters a bit smaller by cutting those Shrek ears. The voltmeters will be fixed in position with hot glue on a flat surface, so they will be aligned with the front panel. As I said before, the voltmeters will have a common positive 5 volt supply wire. Now here comes the tricky part. The voltmeter negative wire can be connected to the battery negative terminal or to the common negative 5 volt supply terminal. What's the difference? Well, while the battery is in use, there is no difference because they are bridged. But when the battery discharge protection kicks in, the battery negative terminal will be disconnected from the common negative terminal, so the battery will be removed from the circuit. So we have two possibilities. If I use the battery negative terminal, the voltmeter will still work when the discharge protection is in use, so you can still monitor the battery voltage. But the voltmeter will flicker when there is no battery in the holder. The second possibility is to connect the voltmeter negative wire to the common negative 5V supply wire. This way the voltmeter will always be powered on. But if you test a salvaged battery that has less than 2.5V, or when the discharge protection kicks in, the voltmeter will indicate 0V, because the battery is removed from the circuit. I chose the first way because I want to know the battery voltage at any time, even if it has less than 2.5 volts. The voltmeter sensor wire will obviously be soldered to the battery positive terminal. These are 1 kilo ohm resistors. I will use them in series with the red LEDs to indicate when the battery is discharging. But after I finished the battery charger, I noticed that the red LEDs are less bright than the others. So if you do this, I suggest you use 680 ohms resistors. It's time to finish the enclosure. It looks like a spaghetti sandwich. Earlier I made these plywood spacers. I will use 10 of them to fix the front panel to the back panel. I could have made a simple plywood box, but the charging modules and the 10 ohm resistors will get a bit hot, so I don't want a sealed enclosure. To fix the spacers in position, I will use super glue. I will use two part adhesive for the 10 ohm resistors. We also need a USB plug. I will salvage one from this printer cable that I no longer need. I'll use hot glue for these LEDs as well. And yes, this hot glue really is hot. Arsh! Next, let's glue some more plywood spacers at different angles, so they will provide a sturdy structure. I will use hot glue to stick all the wires together, I don't like them hanging around. I'm going to use a piece of this semi-transparent plastic folder to make the voltmeter LED displays visible in daylight. You can see there's a big difference. I'll use transparent two-part adhesive to glue it on the voltmeters. I also noticed that if you press the switch in the discharge position without using a battery, the voltmeter will indicate zero volts. This is useful if the flicker annoys you. And we reach the last component. The battery charger needs some self-adhesive rubber pads. The lower ones will be much smaller than the upper ones because I want the battery charger to stand slightly inclined. It's time to test my DIY 18650 battery charger. Let's say you salvage some lithium cells from a laptop battery. Are they any good? Can they be charged? This type of batteries can catch fire if they get overcharged, over discharged, heated or short circuit. So be careful if you use them. Let's first try it with this 1A phone charger. The battery voltage is ok, we can try a discharge cycle now. When the battery reaches the lowest voltage, the discharge protection will automatically disconnect the battery. Most batteries can be discharged to minimum 2.5V, still there are some batteries with minimum 2.7V. 
but without the load connected to the battery, you can see the voltage rising to around 2.8 volts, so there shouldn't be any problem. If we charge two batteries, the current received from the phone charger will be divided between the two charging modules, so each battery will be charged with maximum a few hundred milliamps. This is useful when you charge batteries that you have never used before. When testing salvaged batteries, it's best if you slowly charge them the first time with maximum 500 milliamps or even less. Periodically check if the batteries are getting hot. If they do, it means that they are not good anymore. I already know that these batteries are ok, so now I can charge them with the maximum current. I need my powerful bench power supply for this. When the switch is in the center or zero position, the battery is connected only to the voltmeter. You can see all four batteries using almost 4 amps. After half an hour, the total current consumption decreases to around 3 amps and the batteries are not warming up, so everything is ok. I've decided to use green LEDs when the batteries are charging and blue LEDs when the batteries are fully charged. After another hour, most of the batteries are fully charged and you can see the current consumption dropping towards 0 amps. But if you check the TP4056 charging module datasheet, you will notice that it has a programmable resistor to modify the maximum charging current. So in the future I think I will modify my old battery charger to charge with maximum 400 milliamps when testing salvaged batteries. And after the batteries pass the test, I can charge them with maximum 1 amp with my new battery charger. The discharging feature doesn't tell you what the battery capacity is, but you can test how fast the battery is discharging. It should take a few hours to fully discharge, depending on the battery's real capacity. If it takes less than an hour to discharge, the battery is not good anymore. Or if you want to use two or more batteries in parallel, you can test if they discharge in the same time. If there's a big difference between them, the batteries cannot be used in parallel. I forgot to mark the positive and negative battery terminals. If you connect the battery in the wrong way, you will damage the charging module. But I've never had this problem. Excluding the wires and the casing, the electronic parts for this project cost me 6.5 euros per cell. And you can easily make the charger as big as you want, just add more modules. I know that nowadays battery chargers are getting cheaper, so you can easily buy one. If you want a cheap and simple DIY battery charger, please watch my first video. This was not the point of today's video. The point of this type of projects is to make something the way I like it and learn something new from each project. If you enjoyed this video and did learn something new, click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel.